OK, well, let's get the latest on the situation on the ground in Ukraine for you. Joining me now is the chief executive of McKenzie Intelligence, Forbes McKenzie. Uh, thanks very much indeed for uh, being with us to discuss what really is happening in terms of on the ground. We hear a lot of rhetoric, of course, but R Russia sets, says it's hit weapons depots in Zaporizhia, uh, in the middle there. Uh, it says that it was storing uh, European and American weapons. They've said that separately Western weapons are inflaming the war. What can you tell us about what's really going on down there? Well, the R Russian Defence Ministry, and we should say it's from the Russian Defence Ministry, have stated they've been successful in prosecuting a ballistic missile attack on a weapons dump, which is purported to have been holding uh, Western um, hardware. Um, Zaporizhia is the area and the city just to the north of where the fighting's taking place now. Um, it's an area that is of particular interest to the Russians, the rear echelon for the Ukrainian military. Um, if they have been successful in defeating what is um, Western capability, that will go a long way to improving the morale of the Russian troops on the ground. Bear in mind, a lot of the Russian troops have been in Kiev, where they were beaten. Um, they've now moved around and to the area of the, uh, the Donbass. And it also will be a good news story as well on the home front um, for the Russians, if they have been successful. Uh, and the uh, British Ministry of Defence says Russian air activity is focused on the south east there. They couldn't dominate the skies over the whole of Ukraine, could they? Uh, so uh, now the strategy is to take the southeast, is it? Can, can air superiority be gained in this smaller area then? Sure. It, Western analysts were surprised from the outset that air superiority was not gained quite quickly by Russia. Um, the assessment has come down to the ability for Russian logistics to sustain an, their air effect. Russian air integration has also not been, succe been successful either. And that's one of the ma many reasons why um, they've, they've failed to the north. But with an area around about the Donbass, about 200,000 square kilometres, this may be um, an area that is the Russian aviation may be able to um, have an effect. They may be able to integrate the air capability with the ground capability. And it kind of ties into the question that we've just had um, whereby we've, we've seen a, a strike on an arms dump and really we're seeing the kind of focus um, now shifting towards the southeast of the country. OK, let, let's turn our attention then to the explosions being heard in the breakaway region of uh, Transnistria and Moldova. There are reports of uh, Russian false flag operations there. Um, what sort of military capability can you tell us exists there then? Well, the Russian false flag doctrine or Maskarova is, is well known. Um, the Russians are effective at doing that. In the area of Transnistria, which is an interesting area to the kind of southeast, uh, we see it being ringed now of Moldova. Um, it's a relic actually of, from 1992. There's about 1,200 to 1,500 Russian troops there, a significant arms dump as well. If the stated aim of the Russians is to deny the Ukraine access to the Black Sea, and that's the area of sea to the kind of south of, of Ukraine here, it would make sense for there to be disruption on the western flank and therefore it would make it slightly easier, although they've got a hard slog in front of them, um, to move their forces uh, around Odessa uh, and therefore deny access for Ukraine to the Baltic Sea. Wrong, the Black Sea, sorry. Looks like there's a lot going on down there on the ground. Thanks very much indeed for explaining all of that to us, Forbes McKenzie. Thank you.